so this has been a fun one to read through this morning because and I've been seeing rumors over the last, you know, six months. There's all this investigation going on into the uh, Activision Microsoft merger. And we're getting rumblings um, from some places in the, you know, EU. I guess it's not the EU, but I think it was the UK, which is now separate from the EU. Um, but there's like some UK stuff and some USA stuff and the FTC and other companies are coming forth and saying, oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I think we're going to use, um, and, and people are saying this is, this is Sony, but it's also the FTC. And there's lots of stuff going on here. But essentially what it comes down to is the opposition to the merger are using Starfield as an example and saying this is the perfect proof of why we shouldn't allow Microsoft Activision's merger, and they're using the exclusivity as the arguing point here. So let's just dive into this really quick here as a news article. It says, the FTC thinks Starfield is proof of how Microsoft will handle games it could acquire from Activision Blizzard. And in this new filing, the regulator claims that Xbox that may, Xbox makers handling of Bethesda's upcoming RPG Starfield gives powerful evidence for its decisions to file an injunction against the acquisition, which is currently in progress. Um, <laughs> the defendants put great stock in Microsoft's concerns about infuriating gamers, but if it were to foreclose rivals' access to Activision content, it says those same concerns didn't seem to uh, stop the ZeniMax decision. It says while Bethesda wasn't the first third-party studio Microsoft acquired, and that's true, they acquired quite a few, arguably one of the largest and that is what's currently overshadowing all the other things that Microsoft has done in the gaming space. Um, Redfall and Starfield have both been um, used as evidence in this investigation as Microsoft exclusives. Um, and with the additional evidence that the upcoming Elder Scrolls entry, which, you know, whenever that happens, was probably going to be an exclusive to Xbox as well. The FTC says this is precedence for how Microsoft is going to handle all of the Activision Blizzard franchises, more specifically Call of Duty, and this is what's at the heart of this with Sony. Um, in its filing, the FTC points out that both Activision Blizzard and Microsoft said and made a claim that most PlayStation users do not play Call of Duty at all. And the regulator says that's a bad defense, and it alleges that they have evidence to disprove that statement. I don't know. This is stuff that's beyond me really caring about. Um, I'm just a normal, average gamer. I couldn't honestly care less what platform Starfield is coming to as long as I have some way to play it. There have been times in the past when I have been unable to play a game because I didn't have an Xbox at the time, or there have been times when I wasn't able to play a PlayStation game because I didn't have a PlayStation at the time. I spent about 15 years doing digital nomad existence, traveling around the world with a backpack, a laptop bag, and a camera bag. And I didn't have time for a console for a long time. Um, I had the PS1, the PS2, the Xbox first Xbox and then the Xbox 360 and then I didn't have anything up until um, I would have had an, an, an Nintendo and an, 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 an N64 but I didn't have anything after the Xbox 360 leading up to getting a PS4 so I skipped a generation in there because I was on the road um, anyway there's there is merit in preventing monopolies from taking place. Um, there's arguments on both sides of the fence here to be made, and this is the, the, the tricky part about this ongoing investigation is whether or not there is any truth to arguments being made on either side of the equation. I'm not a prosecutor. I'm not a judge. I'm not a lawyer. You know, so I'm not qualified so to speak to wade into the business side of things but i find it ironic that they literally use the terminology and i gotta find it here real quick um microsoft's concern microsoft being concerned about infuriating gamers if it were to foreclose rivals 
access to Activision content. So I just find the terminology funny on that, but that was back from there when they were first starting talking about the acquisition. They were like, look, we want you to under, we want you to know that we're not going to make Call of Duty or Activision titles Xbox exclusives. They've already always been available to the PlayStation. We anticipate keeping them um, you know, alive and well on all platforms moving forward. However, the argument from the FTC and Sony is that, well, we actually don't believe you, Microsoft. We don't believe your intentions are actually that true. We don't believe that you're going to keep Call of Duty and Activision Blizzard titles as open platform across all different consoles and PCs. We think that you're going to come out with a new Call of Duty game and it's going to be Xbox exclusive, even if it's a timed exclusive, they're concerned that given the fact that Redfall and other games that are made by Bethesda-owned companies have come out as exclusives or timed exclusives, they're worried that they're going to do the same thing with any future Activision Blizzard titles. I think it's a, you know, it is a, you know, there is definitely evidence to support that that could be the case but there's no proof that it would be the case um i think that if i and i'm looking at this as a business owner right now if i spend a bunch of money investing in purchasing another company or two or three or four i'm going to want to recoup that money as quickly as possible and i'm going to want to do that in a way that benefits me the business owner who took the risk of making the investment right? I'm going to want to get the benefit before gamers. Yes, customers are important, everything else, but a few gamers being upset about something being an exclusive or a timed exclusive doesn't really matter to me as a business owner when I'm looking at, you know, wanting to recoup my losses. So it's a smart business decision to want to take the companies that you just bought and have them create things that are going to increase your revenue and the way you do that is by using exclusives and everything else um so i get it and i support business i support the free market um but monopolies are a thing and it's important to keep an eye on things so this is um this is it's a very interesting discussion slash argument that's going place it says here um What's up, everybody? Commercial break here. I got to give a shout out to our guild champions. It's the highest tier membership here on YouTube. We got Ancient Entity, Crazy's Relative, and Remy D. Thanks so much for your support. And of course, to all of the members here on YouTube, thanks for keeping me on the air full time. If you do like what you see and hear on my channel, don't forget to not only like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon, but please support. Consider me your Netflix, your Hulu, your Disney Plus, or HBO, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can do memberships here on the channel, starting at $3 a month. And of course, anytime you see me live or you watch a premiere, you can do super chats and stickers on those videos. And super thanks on any upload you see which allows me to keep doing this full-time and paying the bills. So from Chris and I and all of our rescue cats, we say thank you. Let's get back to the video at hand. Should the merger go through, the FTC believes that eventually Microsoft will lock off Activision Blizzard content to its ecosystem. It should be noted, however, the FTC was slightly vindicated with Redfall weeks before release. Co-director Harvey Smith admitted a PS5 version of the game was in the works, but it was canceled following Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda. Um, that being said, Microsoft has also made several shows of good faith to prove it won't be gaining games off to its ecosystem. It, it's entered cloud gaming-related details with numerous subscription services, some of which are planned to include Call of Duty if things go according to plan. It also entered a 10-year deal with Nintendo to bring the shooter franchise to the Japanese developers' consoles. Um, said Sony reportedly got the same offer but turned it down because it was an inadequate offer even as Microsoft had said it would be fine with the big game being on PlayStation Plus as well. It's only natural here. The article says that Starfield has entered into the acquisition, is centered on another acquisition attempt. Um, given how hard Microsoft has been pushing Starfield as an exclusive, it makes it easy to feel like the studio is talking out of both sides of its mouth, and that it may be trying to find a loophole to exploit if it does acquire Activision Blizzard. And that's the point of all of this. Investigation and due process must, must take place, and rampant rumor mongering doesn't help anybody, which is why I went to 
uh, when I was talking about looking at a place to cover this article, I went to Game Developer because they actually had the headline, FTC uses Starfield as an example, because it is important that this is about the FTC, and I don't want people to be arguing about, Xbox sucks, no, Sony sucks, bah! Get rid of all that baggage, and just look at this from the perspective of, exclusives don't really help anybody on either side of the fence and it would be great to get rid of them completely but companies do have a right to make their money back when they make a significant investment and if you're going to buy a bunch of companies you're going to want those companies to produce content for you not your competition so that's a business thing that people need to keep in their back of the minds because this is not a gray it's not a black and white issue it's definitely gray it's an interesting case to follow along with because this will define future big mergers in the gaming space. So love to hear your thoughts. Drop them down below. Like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. See you in the next video or live stream.